record. It says recording in progress, the little lady's voice. Uh, Dick, you should be able to share the screen. And if you have any difficulty with that, I do have your presentation available here. Here we go. Look at that. So I will now uh, mute everybody. And Dick, you will have to. Uh, I have to go back to the list of participants here. All right. I will mute everybody. And Dick, you will have to unmute yourself so that we can. <laughs> So, Dick, please. There we go. All right, well, uh, let's see. And at least to a centenary issue is one of the uh, so called omnibus issues, although I think it's more like a minibus than an omnibus, since there are only three colonies that participated. I've been a collector of Martin Beek for uh, 50 years or so. And uh, there are a number of things uh, Are you still there? No, I'm still here. I'm just trying to to uh, get the move to the next slide. There. Uh, I want to emphasize that uh, this isn't an exhibition collection. Uh, I've never been a uh, collector to uh, try to build an exhibit, uh, the collection as an exhibit. Uh, perhaps it could be called an accumulation. Uh, uh, and it's been built by uh, buying what uh, I see offered uh, in recent years uh, on eBay and in Dell Comp. Uh, in the earlier years, uh, I have uh, purchased both the, the second collection of Robert Stone's uh, and the Ralph Holtzizer collection. If one looks back in the early issues of the uh, France and Colonies Philatelist, one will find that they were the two uh, principal collectors of uh, Martinique. Uh, Robert, of course, collected all the colonies. Uh, Ralph um, specialized only in Martinique. We'll talk uh, a little bit about the celebration of the Antilles Centenary, uh, uh, then about uh, the stamps and so some souvenir usage and, issue, and talk about the issue dates. Uh, then we'll move on to uh, covers. Uh, uh, which I can divide conveniently into two sections since the lower values were used primarily in 1935 to 36 and only in 1937 to 39 were the high values used. Uh, I've stuck a few village postmark uh, covers at the end, uh, but uh, I don't know that I'll get around to talking about them. The both Stone and Holzeiser uh, were very much interested in village postmarks. Uh, since this exhibit is based strictly on my collection of the tercentenary, Antilles tercentenary issue, why it uh, only includes covers that have at least one Antilles tercentenary stamp on them. Uh, and uh, the uh, so there aren't that many village postmarks uh, to be found. The Antilles Tercentenary celebration ran from October 1935 to March 1936. Uh, there were celebrate various events in France, uh, events in the three colonies, uh, Guadeloupe, uh, Martinique, and Guyane, uh, and stamp issues in each of the three colonies. Each had two designs, and unlike most of the uh, omnibus issues, each of the designs were unique in the three colonies. Connected with uh, this was a, a special cruise of the column B, uh, 
and a special flight uh, by the Lieutenant de Vaisseau Paris. Here are the stamps, six values in two different designs. The lower value shows uh, Pierre Belin to Desnambouk, uh, who is considered uh, to be the found, founder of St. Pierre uh, Martinique, uh, and who was the governor of French possessions, the Antilles, uh, in the early years. Uh, the second denomination shows Victor Schelcher, uh, who is known primarily as the emancipator of the slaves, uh, not particularly the slaves of Martinique, but the slaves of the entire French uh, area. Uh, and after reading the fairly lengthy write-ups that there are uh, on the internet, uh, why it's not really that obvious to me why uh, is particularly considered to be connected with Martinique. Uh, he was elected uh, there, but he wasn't born there, and most of his activities took place uh, in France. The three lower denominations uh, are ones that would have been re were readily used. Uh, the 40 centime uh, was the rate. Uh, for letters for postcards to France. The 50 centime was the rate for letters to France. The one franc 50 was the rate for foreign letters. Uh, the one franc 75 also had uh, uh, a use being the, the rate for a registered letter to France. Uh, five franc and 10 franc uh, didn't really have any use uh, until uh, a number of years later uh, when one started having it airmail. There is a set, set used. Uh, one of the things one uh, immediately looks at is how many were issued and uh, what date were they issued. This is a problem with any issue of the French colonies since the statistics that are in the catalogs are almost always based on what happened in Paris, uh, not what happened in the colony. Uh, and Martinique seems to have had very little uh, in the way of uh, people who have collector uh, organizations, uh, even by 1935, uh, that were <coughs> sponsoring uh, first day of issue uh, or any other sort of special shade covers or so forth, you will find uh, basically nothing list that proclaims itself be a first day of issue cover uh, for Martinique uh, for this issue, well, for most any issue, for most any issues, uh, and certainly not for this. Uh, it's also unclear how many were issued. Uh, the uh, reasonably current delay says there were 33,750 series issued. Uh, the 1936 Iver said 25,000 series. Uh, usually you would think that this would be uh, the number of top values that were issued. Uh, but, and if you look at the catalog values, why the 40 and 50 centime stamps are considered to be a lower priced substantially than the three, four higher values, which would suggest that there were many more of those issued. Uh, but if you look at the availability on cover, uh, and actually pretty much the availability on market, at least in the uh, international market, uh, these things are always, almost always sold in sets. Uh, and if you were going to marry, buy them at the uh, central post office in France, uh, while well, you had to buy them in a, had to buy them in a set. Uh, there's also the question of what was the issue date. Uh, if you look in the 2007 delay, they give an issue date of the 22nd of October, 1935, and say that they were uh, removed from sale on May 4th, 1936. Uh, that 
although certainly the dates that, that, that this happened in Paris, uh, not the dates in the colonies. Uh, as we look further, why I'll make, have more to say about when uh, is a effective of uh, earliest date of use uh, in the colonies. Uh, but <clears throat> certainly, uh, if they were issued in Paris on the 22nd of October, uh, why it's going to be uh, well into November before anybody could put them on a boat and take them uh, from Paris to uh, Martinique. Here is a set uh, with specimen overprints. Uh, I don't know which uh, of the UPU countries applied these. Uh, they are certainly faded. You can see it perhaps best on the five franc. Uh, and <clears throat> these are the only die proofs that I have of the. Uh, considering uh, general availability of French area die proofs. Uh, the die proofs of this issue are very scarce. Uh, I think you can actually find one on offer on uh, Delcomp at the moment, uh, if you want to put out uh, 500 euros for it. Uh, and I, there's just not uh, any established market, uh, but I suppose if you were a slavery, uh, emancipation topical collector, you might want to uh, be feel that you're willing to pay that much for it. Uh, these uh, came, <coughs> came from the Holzheiser collection. However, what I have been fortunate enough to acquire are this group of three uh, large size uh, pen and ink, uh, pen and water color, pencil and water, pencil and uh, drawings of the values. <clears throat> I'm not really sure of the, of the entire process, uh, but this one, uh, bears a, a some sort of approval stamp in the corner. As you can see, uh, they are quite large. Uh, obviously, the engraver uh, used them as a model. Uh, <clears throat> if you look in the catalog, you'll find only one uh, variety listed and that is the five franc uh, in blue which is the color of the one franc 75. Uh, I looked through uh, the stamp of various French publications at the time uh, and have been able to find nothing that's ever been written about this uh, to really <coughs> there's very uh, this is the only copy that I recall having seen offered uh, in the 50 years that I, uh, but I expect if you went to Bear or somebody uh, like that and asked for them, I think probably would uh, be able to produce one. Uh, I think they are proof myself. Uh, lots of four. Uh, used uh, are very rarely seen. Here's a black of four, which happens to be the 10 franc and is the only used block of four I have. I didn't <laughs> bother to include um, mint blocks of four since I don't think they really show anything additional. The only sort of marginal markings that were on the sheets are these corner dates. Uh, those presumably are the dates they were printed and are of some interest since they show that the stamps were printed in August and September of 1935. This, of course, 
sets a lower limit as to the date they can have been issued, even if they were, uh, which I don't think happened, but if somebody actually, but the sheets had been taken, to, had been shipped to France, to, from France to Martinique in advance, uh, and then they were put on sale in Martinique uh, before uh, they were in Paris, but uh, I don't think uh, there's absolutely no evidence of that. As I say, there was very little uh, memoration uh, in Martinique about uh, this. Uh, this little booklet actually <laughs> appeared on uh, Belcomp fairly recently and is the uh, as uh, I've shown it, uh, the interior pages, uh, but there's no inscription on it uh, other than the one at the top of the cover, uh, which says the timbre stamps of the tercentenary, uh, 1935. Uh, the stamps are canceled on December 26, 1935, uh, which <coughs> I have other stamps canceled a few days earlier, so it's not a first day uh, item. I've never, I don't have any uh, cover showing all six values used on one cover, uh, but I have two sets of uh, covers with the six values used on them. This one is as one of each, uh, they're addressed uh, to France. France. Uh, they have no back stamps. Uh, I'm the, uh, and the 40 centime uh, is too uh, low a value uh, to have gone to France. Uh, I uh, think they are uh, just souvenir covers, but they may well be first day covers. Uh, the 24th of December is the earliest <clears throat> is the earliest date uh, that I've seen. Uh, here's another set of uh, covers. Uh, here they paid more attention to uh, putting enough postage on them uh, to, uh, so they probably went through the mail there, back stamped. Uh, these are postmarked on the 30th of December. One of the events that accompanied uh, the tercentenary celebration was the cruise of the, the La Colombe. This was one of the regular French ships, uh, which you can read about in, uh, in the, uh, with a full listing of its shipping, sailing. And, but if you, uh, Look at the look why uh, the regular postal agent uh, was reported uh, to have uh, disembarked uh, according to Saul and <coughs> the Right up uh, that I found on the internet uh, said that it left Le Havre on the 10th of December, uh, which was not a normal date for, for the uh, French line uh, ships to leave. Had 337 passengers, uh, officials, politicians, men and women of letters, artists, <laughs> journalists. Uh, the ship stopped at the Azores, uh, Guadeloupe, Martinique, St. Thomas, Haiti, Cuba. But interest, interestingly, there was no stamp, no stop at Guiana. Uh, arrived at Port de France on the 23rd of December, 1935. Uh, it seems to me quite reasonable uh, that the supply of the two, and they, Mary Stamps was 
brought on the on the, the ship uh, and arrived uh, in uh, Martinique on the 23rd of December 35. So that covers postmarked on the 24th of December 35. Uh, seems to be a reasonable probability that these are first day covers. This, <coughs> this has one of the uh, caches uh, that you find. Uh, they're not very fancy. Uh, it says visit the tricentenary exposition of the Antilles, uh, 1635, 1935. Uh, and has been back stamped uh, so that it's clear that this cover was carried on the column B on its re as it returned on the, uh, to France uh, on the 13th of January. <clears throat> Much more common, although still fairly scarce, are covers from the special flight that accompanied uh, was related to this. Uh, many of the catalog uh, mentions of the, the Lieutenant de Vesso Paris don't really connect it with the, with the until Easter centenary, but it's clear that it was. And if you look at the internet, uh, you can find uh, the relation related. This is a cover sent from Port de France on the return uh, trip. Uh, the it had left, it had come from Paris through the car, car <clears throat> Natal, and Martin, in Martinique. Uh, didn't get there until <clears throat> January and left on the 10th of January for Guadeloupe. Uh, this is a cover sent to Guadeloupe. Uh, it's back stamped the same day in Guadeloupe. Uh, the rate uh, 50 cents would have made the surface rate uh, and uh, presumably there's a two and a half franc airmail charge. The result was not as uh, good for the rest of the back return flight. It was supposed to return from Guadeloupe via North America. Uh, got as far as Pensacola, Florida. Uh, at that point, uh, according to the internet, why it was damaged by a hurricane. Uh, in any case, it was returned to France by ship. Uh, this cover, which was sent, sent from Martinique to France, <clears throat> has a, a, a ca different cachet, one that does relate both the tercentenary and the Lieutenant de Vesso Paris flight. Uh, on the back of it, there is this manuscript uh, inscription, uh, supposedly both the plane uh, and presumably with it the mail uh, went by ship uh, after from Pensacola. <clears throat> Since I am collecting Martinique, uh, the only covers that I'm showing here from this light are covers from Martinique. Uh, there are also obviously other covers from France to Martinique. Uh, there's one uh, been offered recently uh, from the, that went from Dakar to Martinique. Uh, and uh, Now we'll move into uh, the usages. 
as I said, the 40 centime stamp uh, was the rate for postcards to France. Uh, actually, you, they are very, uh, I've seen very few of them. Uh, they see vast numbers of postcards being offered on Delcomp, uh, but almost all of them are earlier than 1935. Uh, the postcard collecting craze uh, had waned by that time. And uh, I think most of the 40 and 50 centime single franking covers and cars to France uh, had the stamps cut off them uh, for collect and there may well represent the reason that the 40 and 50 centime used stamps are relatively low valued in the catalogs. Here is an example of a 50 centime stamp uh, used on a cover to Madagascar. Uh, Madagascar being part of the French colonies was the same rate greatest to France itself. Uh, and uh, this uh, cover uh, was taken to the harbor and posted on the boat, on the boat uh, so that it received the maritime marking. Here are two examples of the one and a half franc used on mail to the United States. The first one is the typical one sent from Fort de France. The second one is another cover that was posted on ship. Uh, it, I don't think it was pat. I don't think Mr. Rougerie was a passenger on the ship. I think there's another you find during the late 30s, late 30s the merchants uh, frequently took uh, their covers, uh, letters to the ships and posted them there uh, after the mail had closed at the post office. And this one has a New York pack boat uh, receiving mark on it, uh, February 27, 1936. Note that these are both uh, from early, early 1936, which is the period, period when these stamps were uh, probably used. Uh, the one franc 75 or eight, uh, one finds on these covers to Monsieur Guyer. Uh, he was a merchant there in Saint Pierre. Uh, and a close friend of Ralph Holtzheiser. Uh, and uh, there are lots of uh, covers to Gouillere uh, that he, he passed on to Ralph. Uh, I have in the, our New York Public Library had a copy of the 1936 Annuaire of Martinique. That gives a rate of 1.05 francs. <coughs> Martinique had, in general, uh, had lower rates for inter mail within the island uh, than the rates for mail to France. And uh, the basic letter rate was 30 centimes and the uh, registration fee 75. Uh, now these are paid at the 1.75 franc. Uh, I think that it there is cover evidence to show that uh, they changed the rates in Martinique and went to the regular French rates instead of the special or rates in the middle of 1936. Uh, here is one cover, foreign, foreign registered cover. Uh, as I said before, the foreign letter rate was one and a half francs. Uh, the registry fee was two francs. That made 350 and two 175s together uh, neatly makes up 350. And this 
is June 1936. That's a major correspondence that one finds uh, from this period in, in Martinique. It was addressed to Mr. Kakal uh, in Trinidad. Uh, here are two covers, uh, both Frank the two Frank 40, uh, which is the rate for <clears throat> 20 to 40 grams. This seems to be the typical for the Kakal correspondence. You see, almost never see one Frank, 50 Frank covers to Mr. Kakal. Uh, I don't, I don't know whether his correspondents uh, were afraid, uh, figured that the letter was always going to weigh over 20 grams and automatically put 240 on them, or whether uh, at some point people figured that if there was just a 1.50 franc stamp on it, it wasn't worth saving the cover. Uh, and Nineteen thirty-six or so is when uh, you started getting uh, airmail, uh, probably Pan Am, uh, within the from Caribbean islands. So. Uh, in doing his book on French airmail rates, uh, he, they were uh, Piccarelli was not able to find any published, rate, published rates for airmail from Martinique from the 1936 period. There must have been one some, somewhere, uh, but they were peculiar amounts. You see, this is uh, ranked at 3.65. Uh, the way the ranking is made up, it seems very unlikely uh, that it uh, should have uh, been, uh, that it should have been uh, an overpayment because it, he's used a 10 on put a 10 on team stamp on here. Uh, which would have been a common stamp. So I think the 365 is what it was supposed to be, but that leaves 315 for the airmail, uh, which uh, seems a very peculiar amount. But the, the airmail rates seem were peculiar uh, throughout. Here is one from that uh, uh, 1937, you got, you did get published airmail rates in the U.S. and France, and the surface rates were raised. Uh, and this is a one franc seventy-five surface rate plus two francs registry on a cover to Costa Rica. The only cover to Costa Rica that I have. Uh, found. Here are three covers all uh, sent to French Guiana, uh, all Frank, six Frank 60. Uh, I think that they are all uh, official mail uh, and therefore the, only the airmail charge of six Frank 60 was put on them. Uh, I cannot verify uh, that uh, as the correct airmail charge. <clears throat> Here we have airmail to North America in August 1937. Uh, the foreign surface rate was still 150. Now you could 
now there was a use for the five franc stamp uh, so that here we have one uh, at five at six franc 50 uh, and another another one at 10 franc 50 so that the airmail charge was four francs for each five grams the basic rate went up to 175 so now you have a 6.75 franking and an 11.25 franking for five to 10 gram letter. So now we have some use for those five and 10 franc stamps. You could also send airmail to, what, suppose, airmail to France, which went by air just from Martinique to New York, and then went by sea mail from New York to France. Uh, and here are two examples uh, from 1937 to 38. Uh, the rates kept changing. According to Piccarelli, there are five different period rate periods in 1937 for airmail to North America, to the United States, or to Canada. Uh, here are three covers uh, showing airmail rate of three francs for each five grams, uh, the first two, and the third one, a rate of three and a half francs for five grams, all of them being <coughs> overweight, weighing two or three, 10 or, 10 or 15 grams. 1939 had only two rate periods, uh, one with a rate of 3.50, then it went up to four, and uh, at the same time, the basic surface rate had been raised from 175 to 225. Uh, in September 1937, one starts uh, to have direct airmail all the way from Martinique to France via Natal. Uh, there are flight, these are, have first flight covers uh, some of them have the cachets in red, some of them have the cachets in blue, and the postmarks are sometimes in red. Uh, and this red, <coughs> what seems to have been a very fugitive ink uh, and has faded. Uh, I have uh, one or two covers which look almost as though the stamps are never canceled at all. This stamp down here is one from the Paris Exposition issue, uh, another omnibus issue that appeared uh, in 1937. On the 1st of October, 1939, the rate for, for the Via Natal was raised from 14 francs for 10, five grams to 18 francs for five grams. Uh, and here are examples uh, before the rate change and after the rate change. This is one of the puzzling covers. Uh, looking at it with the 30 with 30 and 35 centime stamps used on it. One figures that the that it wasn't an overpayment uh, that the, the sender intended to pay fourteen fifteen. Uh, the sixty five the fifteen franc fifteen centime figure suggests that the, that it that the surface paid should have been sixty five centimes, uh, according to. Uh, Piccarelli, why well, it was raised 90 centimes on November 12th, but the, there are other covers that suggest that, that that raise wasn't actually effective or else uh, the uh, In mid May 1939, uh, you now had 
Pan Am flying across the Atlantic from New York to from, from the United States uh, to France. You could get uh, airmail, uh, which here it's been ad ad endorsed via Miami, uh, and the rate was 15 francs per 10 grand. <laughs> One of the only rates that Picker I found that was based on 10 gram increments rather than <clears throat> five grams. Uh, perhaps this is because uh, 10 grams is closer to a half an ounce. Uh, that was what people in the United States thought of, uh, considered to be a increment for changing the rate. There were no, there are no first, first flight covers. Uh, They, uh, in general, these are uh, endorsed via Transatlantique. Uh, in August 1939, uh, you had a new development. Uh, war was coming, and we have censorship in Martinique. Uh, this cover uh, from October 18, 1939, uh, shows the censorship that. We just sort of dip our toes into the censorship. Uh, and you'll notice that we have a cellophane tape on here. Normally, uh, one finds a brown paper tape uh, used for sealing the, the covers. And this red uh, censor militaire uh, is typically used on the tapes uh, in this format uh, at the beginning of. Uh, first year or so of the censorship. After that, they stopped bothering with it. Uh, and normally, this pointed oval is what was used to tie the sensor tape to the cover. Uh, this particular sensor, number four, in the first few months of the censorship, uh, for some reason, decided to do it differently. And he tied the, the sensor tapes with his uh, numbered hand stamp and use the oval uh, as the additional marking. Uh, here are two covers uh, sent via Transatlantique uh, to Switzerland. Uh, they both show an 18 franc rate, but I uh, find it difficult to justify that 18 franc rate. Uh, the Switzerland was a foreign destination so that the rate should have been based on the foreign postage. Uh, and do you, was it, it computed just by adding the foreign postage to France to the uh, to the air the airmail rate to France to the foreign postage, or was it computed by adding the airmail rate from Martinique to France plus the airmail rate from France to Switzerland? Uh, in Piccarelli's book, uh, he has rates for Guadeloupe to all sorts of European countries, uh, but in Martinique. Uh, apparently didn't consider it wor worth publishing rates to all the countries and uh, presumably comp computed them by adding a rate uh, from Paris to that country to whatever the rate, foreign rate was. Uh, you don't find very many uh, European, de European destinations outside of France. Uh, and we're now in October, uh, all right, in September and October 39. Uh, you'll notice this cover has the typical way for using the sensor markings, the oval tying the sensor tape and the double circle uh, 
as an additional marking. You, these sensor markings uh, confuse many uh, sellers, and for that matter, I think also many dealers and collectors uh, that think they, that say this is double censored. It's not double censored, it's just the censor put uh, two different markings on the cover. And it's not a military censor, at least not uh, in the sense that the British call certain things civil censors and other things military, and use the term military censor for censorship of military ma mail from soldiers. Uh, the term military censorship was used <clears throat> in most of the French area uh, on all civilian mail as well as uh, military mail. And uh, I guess we'll have a minute or two. Uh, here are two covers uh, sent from uh, Saint Pierre, which since the explosion of Mount Palais uh, is a quote small town in Martinique, uh, but is uh, a dest vacation destination. Uh, Here are two covers from Diamant and from Marin. Both philatelic, in my opinion. They're both drastically over Frank. Uh, and this Diamant cover uh, came <coughs> with the registry receipt slip uh, enclosed in the cover. Uh, and I think that uh, completes. Uh, what I brought to show, uh, have set up here to show. Thanks, Dick. Um, you did manage to skip over your penultimate slide there. If you want to go back to that one and highlight it for us, that one. Yeah, this is just two more uh, small villages, uh, Duco and Trinité. Uh, it's interesting, I don't have any covers from some of what uh, considered larger of the small villages, such as Saint Marie and Saint Therese, uh, and of all of these, I have just one cover uh, from the villages. All right, um, thank you, and for the group now, if you have questions, let's. Dick, you can leave your screen uh, sharing on for now. If anybody has a question for Dick, now is the time to bring it up. Remember to unmute. Okay, I, I have a question. Uh, Dick, a, a couple of covers you said went via Natal. Did I miss something? Is that the name of a ship or is it another? It can't be that those covers went by way of South Africa, I don't believe. No, they went by way of Natal in Brazil. Or Natal, Natal uh, they went from the French Equatorial Africa to Brazil, uh, to the Caribbean. Okay, thank you. The car uh, and then and French Africa and then the, the Natal is Natal in Brazil. Okay. Dick, at the beginning, you mentioned that there were three colonies that had the Antillean anniversary stamps, and obviously uh, Guadeloupe would be one. So what was the third one? Was it uh, Guyane? Guyane. Oh, even though it's not Antillean. Well, uh, it's, uh, I think, you are considered a uh, Part of the Antilles. Uh, okay, close enough. Antilles possessions of, of France. Uh, but as I say, it seemed to be sort of left out uh, from uh, the, it wasn't included in the cruise, it wasn't included in the flight. <laughs> but of course, there may not have been much of any place for the flight to have landed uh, in uh, 
Jan. Thanks. All right, Dick, do you want to unshare your screen, please? I think you can do that at the very top there. Maybe I can do it too. Let's see. Yep. There. Now I got us back. More questions. Um, just just one comment quickly on uh, on on Via Natal because we might since we might have seen some mail earlier uh, because there used to be a, a steamship from the Messagerie Maritime that was called Natal, so there is certainly mail from the colonies, uh, but I think that ship uh, sunk in nineteen seventeen more or less, <laughs> uh, so on on the letter mail. There is effectively the, uh, an option that it was via Natal in Brazil via the city more than anything else. Thank you. Uh, Ed here, Dick. Uh, just a kind of a question of interest. Uh, of the three colonies, Martinique was the only one to have a village, uh, Solcher, uh, in honor of, of Solcher. We actually visited that village and they have a nice statue of them there. But I was wondering, you haven't seen, have you seen use of these stamps from that village? No. Uh, that would have uh, seemed to be an obvious uh, souvenir or something. Also, I, uh, reading the, from what it said on the, uh, said uh, in Wikipedia in the article, why, uh, in spite of the fact that Chelsea was uh, renowned uh, as an emancipator of the slaves uh, and a, uh, in general, liberal uh, politician, uh, uh, why they tore down his statue uh, uh, 10 years or so ago by the mob. Oh, oh well. <laughs> okay. More? I, I thought I read that this is Dan. I thought I read that the I think the statues were destroyed, I think in 2020 at the height of the post George Floyd uh, riots. So I, I confess I don't understand the local uh, you know the, the local uh, politics there, but apparently uh, Schulcher is now the goat. <clears throat> That stands for greatest of all time in America. Well, <laughs> the other kind of goat, <laughs> last in the class type. Uh, yes. <laughs> all right. Um, I offered to Marty Bratzel to let him put in a plug for his book about Cameroon postal history. Marty, here's your chance. Okay. <laughs> Well, thank you very much. Uh, some of you know that I've been, my, my focus in philatelic life is on Cameroon. And over a period of about 25 years, we put together a book, probably the definitive book on the postmarks and postal history of French Cameroon. The book weighs in at just over two kilos. And um, it covers everything from all the missing all the post offices, all recorded postmarks. There's over uh, 425 postmarks. And there's a um, fair amount of coverage about Cameroon in World War II, especially when it comes to um, censorship, uh, internees, and so forth. It covers, I think, any aspect of Cameroon that you might possibly be interested in. And it might also be of interest to um, people who collect other um, French territories. Anyway, the book is available. If you'd like to um, purchase a copy, let me know. I'll put my uh, email address in the, uh, the chat. If anybody has any questions, I'll be glad to field them. You might mention the price and whether or not it includes shipping. Okay, the book is available from England. So the base price is 10 pounds. 
and shipping will depend upon the destination. Now, um, uh, what's his name? Um, Len Hartman in Kentucky has a few copies and he can offer them at a uh, slightly reduced shipping cost, but it is still rather expensive going to North America. Now shipping to, uh, to Britain, to France and the continent isn't that much. Uh, to um, within Britain, it's 10 pounds. Pardon me. Uh, no, the book is 25 pounds. The uh, shipping within Britain is 10 pounds and shipping to France and, um, and uh, Europe is 16 pounds. So the base price of the book is 25 pounds, which is about 40 US dollars. Anyway, I'll put my um, email address in the chat. If anybody is interested, then you can contact me. Very good. And I'll, I'll leave the Zoom meeting open for a few minutes after we're done so that you have a chance to get that email address out of chat. Uh, can I just ask you, Marty, are you plugging this in the France and Colonies Journal? Yes, it is in the France and Colonies Journal. Right, it's all been organized. Fine, thank you. And it's been plugged in the US version as well, right? Yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very good. Uh, let me ask what's what's the title again? The uh, title again is the the postmarks and postal history of Cameroon under French administration, nineteen sixteen to nineteen fifty nine. Thank you. It is um, just under five hundred pages, and there's a CD that goes with it that has uh, six hundred and fifty pages of um, background documentation that documents uh, all the postal tariffs, the dates that post offices were opened and closed and so forth. I, if I may say so, uh, 25 pounds seems like a very reasonable price. Well, thank, thankfully the uh, Stuart Rossiter Trust uh, provided some underwriting to this. Ah. All right, at this point, I'm going to turn off the recording.